Greetings, I'm Vince Wolzinski, the Deputy Dean for the Yale School of Engineering and Applied Science and the Director of the Center for Engineering Innovation and Design. We want to speak about engineering uniquely at Yale. The story has three chapters, insider's intel, some interesting individuals, and then illuminating insights. We begin by looking at the Center for Engineering Innovation and Design. The CEID is our place at the university for people to come together, to create, and to have fun. It includes an open classroom where we have design classes, and students then progress from the classroom into the studio, where they use the tools to go ahead and take their ideas and create products. They may meet in groups, use some of our hand tools, progress down into our machine shop, or use some of the 3D printing. Some applications even make use of our wet lab. Within the CEID, we're open to all the students at the university. Of the undergraduates, a majority of them are science and engineering, but they include students from all of our disciplines at Yale College. We like to think that we learn, make, and share from informal to formal sides. On the make side, most informal is the open studio itself, where students can come in and create during the holidays, or learn chocolate making right before Valentine's Day. On our club side, this is the location for supporting things like building rovers, or outreach projects that go into Cameroon and Tanzania and improve living conditions for others. The most formal aspect of our MAKE continuum is in fact our summer workshop series. In this case, Yale students take on projects of interest to themselves. This year, David and JR took on a project with the government of Columbia. Columbia put out a call for designs of integrated face shields and masks. David and JR took those Colombian designs and worked with them. They put them into CAD. They created a mannequin with an inlet for the mouth and for the nose. And then they created a test chamber to take those designs and see how they worked when humans would exhale and the flight of particles when they would inhale. All of this informing the government of Colombia on which designs were most effective. In a similar light, Maria worked with the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. Sarcophagus that held ancient mummies were vibrating. And so Maria took the pedestals that the mummies rested upon and modeled it. She applied finite element analysis and frequency analysis to design a spring system that reduced the vibrations. The springs would be placed at certain points within the pedestal. That was all digital, but Maria needed to create. Doing this remote, she acquired a 3D printer, thanks to Yale, and began printing these parts, such as she was able to convert her digital thoughts, her digital creations into the real world such that the vibrations were dampened. As another example, we're seeing time and time again how the CEID is not just the infrastructure, but it's the people that make a difference. In another chapter, the concept of worldwide engineering, where Yale students leave the classroom, they leave the campus, and they get engaged with the entire world. In this case, it's the World Robot Olympics, where teams from every nation come together and compete, and certain teams are guided by Yale students. They mentor them remotely, and periodically they visit with teams from Bangladesh, with teams from Germany, with teams from Afghanistan, to help others apply engineering fundamentals to solve challenging problems. The relationship with Afghanistan continued to the point of the Team Afghanistan visited the Center for Engineering Innovation and Design. That led to a partnership with the School of Architecture. 
and the lead mentor, Roya Maboub, is developing a school for technology for young women in Afghanistan. School of Architecture, School of Engineering partnered on this design, incorporating the Center for Engineering, Innovation, and Design in the new technical high school in Afghanistan. Just a great example of the outreach of Yale's engineering students to make an impact in the world. The concept of collaboration is an important one. And during the pandemic, the collaborations and partnerships between the Yale School of Engineering and Applied Science, the Yale School of Medicine, the Yale School of Public Health, and the Yale School of Nursing came out in a strong way as we developed a product design, product innovation, product creation process to take on some of the challenges of medical technology and PPE. What we did was transform the CEID into a site to test N95 respirators for their efficiency removing particles and for their flow impedance so that our medical team at Yale New Haven Hospital and the Yale School of Medicine had the very best equipment for treating uh, the patients. As another example, partnering with Unilever and looking at mass production of new forms of respirator, whether they were blow molded or injection molded, some of the most uh, advanced technology put into place to make thousands of these masks at a moment's notice. Working with physicians and pulmonologists and nurses at the hospital, trying to extend the use of equipment, applying engineering fundamentals, Venturi design to build Y splitters for ventilators, and then also to create new ways of uh, building quickly ventilator parts that could be used once, but then the machine builds another one and then looking into advanced materials to build other components of the ventilators. The nasopharyngeal swabs were in short supply, so partnering with our colleagues at the medical school on printing their own so that they had the tools for COVID testing. And extending this into the classroom, a class that was focused on computer-aided design now uses the Y ventilator and looks at computational flow analysis to see the path of the particles in this new equipment. And this partnership, this collaboration continues today with the School of Engineering, working with the School of Medicine and building test stations for Yale students to examine themselves for COVID. Working with the School of Nursing and Cisco on mass producing face shields for the nurses and for others, and in working with the School of Public Health and the Connecticut Department of Transportation on airflow on Connecticut's train system. That was a little bit of the insider's intel, but what is most important and most moving to me is actually the effect on individuals. Rowan Palmer and Ian Denzer came to Yale four years ago. I actually met them when they were high school students. Rowan at an international robotics competition, and then Ian, when he was visiting Yale as a pre-frosh, having been admitted to the class, on the very day that Ursula Burns, the CEO of Xerox, was speaking, Ian got to meet other potential Yale students and Ursula on that day. When they came to Yale, they found each other. Where did they find each other? At the Activities Bazaar. And at that bazaar, they discovered the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association. That time became their very first year as uh, first year students, where they built a vehicle that started on land, rotated its uh, wings, and took off. It continued on over their four years, but that's not the only thing that they did. Rowan a varsity athlete on gymnastics. Ian, competitive in frisbee, uh, ultimate frisbee with his residential college, and also a cook, a colonist, who would work in pop-up uh, restaurants around the Yale campus. So this multi-dimensional aspect of both Ian and Rowan added to their being and explains a little bit 
why they are at Yale. That summer came time for internships. Rowan going to Oak Ridge National Laboratory where the 3D car was actually printed and she worked on 3D printing the size of industrial spaces. Coupling that with international travel, Ian returned to his home in Hawaii working at the National um, Astronomy site and building a new mount for the telescope. Coming back to Yale, getting re-engaged with the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association, with Ian taking on the Orenthopter project, moving its wings and the vehicle lifting off, and rowing now, leading the rocket team. The rocket team that later on would travel to a competition. In addition to that, educating others on computer-aided design with workshops and meeting some lead industry uh, representatives, including the vice president of Boeing coming to campus. Speaking of the competition, Roe and her team traveling to the international rocket engineering competition and blasting off with their Yale rocket. That summer, time for more internships, Rowan, with her sense of making, gets a position at Black & Decker Makerspace. And Ian, who has this interest in robotics, applies that to a new company that's looking at surgical robots. Coming back to campus, their junior year, they have some chance for some interesting classes. Rowan taking one on social robots and programming robots to interact with others and Ian looking at the concept of autonomous vehicles and programming those robots to operate in a simulated city-like landscape. And also that year, Ian and Rowan are elected as the co-presidents of the Yale Undergraduate Aerospace Association. A team of over 70 students from all the disciplines at Yale that come together to create, to learn, to teach each other the elements of air vehicles, of rocketry, of helium balloons that go up, and this year, even of satellites, as the team is now partnering to launch a satellite with the Yale Aerospace Association included in that launch. Rowan and Ian continued on this last summer with very interesting internships. Rowan getting one with the National Foundation, the Brooks Owens Fellowship, where she was employed by Lockheed Martin to communicate with the International Space Station even at 3.41 a.m. when she corresponded with them with the arrival of the SpaceX astronauts. And then Ian, continuing his interest in aerospace, secured a position with Zipline, a company that uses autonomous air vehicles to deliver medical supplies. Very, very exciting of the trajectories of both Rowan, who's headed back to Lockheed Martin to work on human flight regarding landing on the moon and travel to Mars. And as Ian evaluates his possibilities in the area of autonomous vehicles and in the area of applied robotics, he probably may end up at a startup or two along the way. For myself, it's been incredibly rewarding to know these two individuals before they're even at Yale and to watch their development into engineering professionals. The last segment of the story is one of illuminating insights. And as we went through these examples, we first looked at an institution the institution being the Yale School of Engineering and Applied Science, having depth in concepts of creation, of design, of engineering, as exemplified by the Center for Engineering and Applied uh, Science Makerspace. And then we saw that extension into the liberal arts, connections in areas of politics, in areas of society, working with the School of Architecture, with that example being the development of a school in Afghanistan. And finally, applying these skills, applying these connections to solving problems of purpose, in this case, with the School of Medicine, Nursing, and Public Health. 
What that represents is the Yale engineer. The engineer who is grounded in depth, but has breadth and takes on problems of purpose. That same case study was applied with our individuals, with Rowan and Ian, with their depth as mechanical engineering students and their breadth in leadership and communication and outreach and empathy with others, helping them become the very best of themselves. And we see their problems that they've taken on and solved, and most importantly, the trajectories that they have, solving these problems of purpose. They are the Yale engineer. Collectively, that is the story. That is the story of engineering uniquely at Yale.